Who's enjoyed everything so far? Come on, if you would, give a huge round of applause for the people who invest in your children every, every single Sunday in a, what I believe is an unbelievable way. Like they really do an amazing job at communicating on their level. So if you're new here, we want you to understand that we absolutely value your children and what God kind of gives us in our life, the Bible would say, is a gift. What do I say a gift? Um, because children really are a gift from God, and it's our opportunity as the people of God and as parents to kind of pour some things into them. And the thing that children are given to you for, the gift that they are, everybody say legacy, is for all of us to have an opportunity to leave a legacy in the earth. What does that mean? That we pass some things on to them, that we allow them to stand on our shoulders and be more successful um, than we ever thought, dreamed possible because of the platform we allow them to stand on, that we've kind of paved the way. So here at Epic, I want to just take just a moment in this orange Sunday where the Next Gen Department took over in Big Church, which was honestly pretty fun. How many of you kind of dug it a little bit? They're like, hey, so they dance over there. Yes. Maybe there's some, some people who are kind of with tradition and like, they're dancing, that's sinning. No, it's just, just celebrating what God has done in their life. And I appreciate the fact that our Next Gen Department teaches them about Jesus, who he is, that they're actual sons and daughters of the King and they're not afraid to, like, dance. How many of y'all wish you could dance like that? How many wish you knew technology the way they did? How many of you have kids and they jacked your phone up and now you can't use it? Right? So kids are super smart, and they're just, they really are a gift. And I want you guys to know that we pour a, like, we are known as a church that kind of um, pours resources and energy into our community, but I want you to know that we are absolutely the church that pours a lot of resources into our next gen department that means uh, journey quest and shift to empower the next generation to honestly take over where we leave off that they would be able to take um, this vision and, and what god has done in their life and do greater things than we ever thought dreamed possible um, in the life of this church and i just want to honor uh, pastor amy and pastor john justin who are our next gen pastors some of you may know them some of you may not know them but they spend with their team a large amount of time and they have a large amount of influence in your children's lives so if you guys would stand up please um i want you guys to honor these people because of what they do week in and week out pouring into your students into your children to make sure that they grow spiritually i love you guys so there's a dilemma that we have as a church and you have as a parent and it's called the, the 43,000 dilemma. What does that mean? As a church, we only get 40 hours a year with your kids. I didn't say a week. I didn't say a month. I said a year. We get 40 hours a year with your children. You, on the other hand, as parents, how many parents in here? You get 3,000 hours a year with your kids. So we get 40. You get 3,000. So why is that a dilemma? Because if we don't learn to work together, if we don't learn to parent in a community with a strategy, then what is taking place right now in America and around the world will continue to take place. What is that? Kids are being lost in transition. Children are not continuing to go to church. Only 11% of college students attend church. Only 55% of high school students attend a, a student um, service. But however, 95% of people who are 20 to 29 years old said they went to church regularly in elementary school and middle school. So somewhere along the way, what we need to understand is children are absolutely being lost in transition. So that kind of brings us this dilemma. We have 40 hours, you have 3,000. We have 40, you have 3,000. So what does that mean for us as a church? So we have to be absolutely very own purpose with everything that we do in those environments across the hall. Maybe you wonder, why do you spend so many resources? Why do you like paint the rooms bright colors and, and they have dance teams and they do all that, all that stuff that they do because we value your children. And we're going to put as many resources as God allows us to make the greatest impact that we possibly can. Why? Because we got 40 hours a year. So that's why we give them candy. And you go, what do you mean? Because I want them to come back. What kid doesn't like candy? And I love watching y'all try to walk them to the car after they all tank up on candy. It's the most amazing thing ever. Like, 
Why do, why do they do what they do? Because we want your children to love God's house. We want them to develop such a deep love for God's house that the Sunday you don't want to go, they keep saying, when are we going? When are we going? When are we going? We're we going to church today. We're we going to church today. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? If I will go. Have you ever went on vacation with a kid and he asked you a million times, are we there yet? Like, all you want to do is just get to vacation. So what? Just say it, parents, so they shut up. So, like, you just need to know, like, our, our, our back reasoning for making kids' environments so great is so you'll come. So that they'll want to come back, and they'll continue to come back. And I need you to know that the next-gen department's not just babysitting. They're not just entertaining. They're actually teaching them the Word of God on a level that they can understand and apply to their life. I mean, how many adults in here would say, you need to learn to have joy when things don't go your way? How many of you feel like your Sunday's all jacked up because kids took over, and you're like, oh, man, have joy when things don't go your way? Because the truth is, if you paid attention, you could learn a very, very deep subject that most people never grasp. How do I stay happy when things don't go my way? Focus on the greatest gift that was ever given, Jesus. That's what your kids learn all the time. So for us, we have to have the greatest impact in those 40 hours we can. For you, what does that mean for you? You have 3,000 hours. And you need to know 86% of what a child decides to believe spiritually comes from their parents. 96% of their moral values comes from the parents. So you get 3,000 hours. So what does that mean? Well, it means this reality. How many parents in here? That's a lot of hours, isn't it, parents? You know, you're with your kids a lot. And here's what happens when you're with someone or something a whole lot. You begin to take it for granted, and you think, I got another day. I got another week. I got plenty of time. How many parents in here of kids who are now married and moved out know that that time goes by really fast? It's here today and gone tomorrow. So what I want to challenge you with, parents, even though you have 3,000 hours, you have to be super aware and super intentional of partnering with this church where we've got 40, you've got 3,000 of walking real authentic faith in your home. How many of you know kids don't listen to what you say? Every parent, raise your hand, especially if you have a teenager, okay? Like you just know this, right? <clears throat> but can I tell you what they do? They watch you. And you have to be very intentional that what you say lines up with what you do. Because you can't talk for 3,000 hours. You can't, you can't lecture them every time they make a mistake. So what's best to do? It's best to model what you say you believe. It's best to model what you say you value. And in those 3,000 hours, if we work together, great things will happen in the next generation. And we'll see them live a very powerful legacy. So I want to give you kind of three action steps to... To help you do this because if you don't have a kid you know somebody who has one and that's kind of how we look at this thing we we call epic a family of faith that we're all brothers and sisters there's no just aunt and uncles and we're doing this together and you just need to know this truth it does take a village to raise a kid it absolutely does you cannot do it on your own how many of you have more than one kid okay so here's what happens when you have children how many people in here don't have children? Raise your hand. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help y'all. Stop giving people advice of how to raise kids. Right? How many of you, how, no, wait a minute, don't clap. Don't clap because you did it too. Like before you had kids, you were telling everybody else how to raise their kids. I'll, I'll prove it to you. How many of you ever said when your, ki when your friends, like ex-friends that had kids and you were still without kids came over to your house and you wondered, why did we invite them over? And you said this when they left, our kids won't ever act like that. I don't know what's wrong with them. They need to, and you filled in the blank, and then you, like, text them or call them and say, hey, I just want to let you know, if you would do this, your kids would totally act right. And you said, my kids will never do that. My kids will come up. When we go to visit somebody's house, they will come over and sit down and not speak until spoken to. They will know how to go through the food line. They'll chew their food without their mouth being open. They will say, yes, sir, and no, sir. I mean, they will behave. My kids won't act like your kids. How many of y'all said that? And then you had kids. And you were like, they're not my kids. <laughs> that is not the dream I had for my children. They're acting like they're all crazy. They're the rest of them. How many of you how many of you are the oldest? You're like you have brothers and sisters and you're the oldest. Can I just apologize to you? I'm the oldest. We're all jacked up. 
Because here's the truth. How many of you knew exactly how to raise children when you had children? You didn't. So all the, all the oldest, like if you are a parent right now of an oldest child, go apologize to them because they're being counseling when they're 35 over you. Because you just didn't know. I mean, think about it. You didn't even know how to hold it. When it came out, it was all flimsy and pink. And you're like, what do I do with this? Like, and you're like breaking his neck and stuff. Like he's probably got back problems because you didn't hold him correctly. Okay, so like, like your oldest kid is just, whoo, okay, so you got to help them a lot. How many, how many of you are the middle kid? Yeah, see, y'all got issues. Y'all actually believe you're the best. My own son stood up here and said, I'm the best kid. Why? Because he's a middle kid. Why does he, you know, you know why a middle kid believes that? Because they tell themselves that every single day because they're the middle one and nobody talks to them. <laughs> I mean, you know that. I just stand in front of the mirror every day. I'm the best. I love me because nobody talks to me. <laughs> Is that, how many middle kids in here? I'm going to tell you, it's the truth, right? How many of you in here are the baby? See? And everybody knew it. They met you and in 30 seconds. I went, that's the baby. So here's what I want to tell you before I give you these three points. We have to understand that there's no perfect parents. That, that we're all doing the best we can, but God wants to use us where we are to impact our children's lives if we understand it's best done in the context of community. And here's what you need to understand, parents, look at me. No one has the ability to influence your child like you do. I don't care how unequipped you feel or non-prepared, or maybe you feel like because you're in the teenage or the young 20 years and you're that parent and you go, but I blew it for so many years. Can I just tell you, you still, all studies show parents have the most impact on their kids. So please understand you've been given a powerful gift, a great opportunity to change the trajectory of your family name. Not, not just your kids, your entire family name. Everybody say my house. And I'm talking about the house that you live in, the place that you call home. Your house is a part of God's design to influence your children because that's where they are influenced the most. Your house is the best chance, gives a child the best chance to experience unconditional love. Not here. We only get them 40 hours a week. You have them for 3,000. Your house is the best place to demonstrate authentic faith. Your house is the best place to create a safe environment. Not here. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen here. You just need to understand. You've got them for 3,000 hours. We only get them for 40. So please understand, you have the greatest influence. The second thing you need to learn to do as a parent, and I had to learn this, you have to learn to parent beyond your capacity. Because you're going to feel like that you only have so much knowledge, that you only have so much time. And when you decide, I'm going to learn to parent beyond my capacity, here's what you begin to understand. I can choose to parent by myself, or I can choose to parent in a community with a strategy. That the family of God can partner with my family. They get them for 40, I got them for 3,000 hours, and we're going to come together on this thing. Like, I'm actually going to pay attention when uh, the text message comes in, or I have the app, or Pastor Amy sends out the email. So here's what my kids learned today, and I'm going to take my 3,000 hours, and I'm going to reinforce all of that so that the trajectory of my family name is vastly different than it's ever been before. And we're going to partner together. I'm going to parent beyond what traditionally has been told how it works. Because the truth is, you have a greater opportunity to impact their spiritual growth than we do. So if we take those two and we put them together, then you honestly leave a very powerful legacy. So what do we need? We need people in this room. What people am I talking about? I'm talking about single people. I'm talking about married people. I'm talking about empty nesters. I'm talking about businessmen, businesswomen. I'm talking about Everybody in here needs to decide that you will take on the challenge and make a decision to invest in what is the greatest thing you can invest in, the next generation. I appreciate with all that I have in me the number of people here that are on our E-team, but this church is just like every other church in the next-gen department. What do I mean by that? I don't know why 
in every single church that I know of, that I speak at, that I have the opportunity to help like invest in their leader and go be a part of, that the greatest environment that's at that church, which is the next generation environment, has the least volunteers. That's in this church, and that's in every church I've ever been a part of. The place that gets the most resources, the place that people say they value the most, has the least volunteers. So what am I saying? I'm challenging you. If you're going to decide to make Epic Church your home, I need you to understand a few things. We value the next generation. It will be given a majority of the resources, the time, and the energy. Why? Because children's hearts matter to God. So I need to speak to every man in here. And I'm going to say this with as much compassion and pastoral love as I possibly can. You may disagree with that, and that's okay. But A at EpicChurch.tv. But here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're a man in this room, and you're not involved in some aspect of next gen, the truth is, you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm just going to be that forward. And I know you're like, no, 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 there's no condemnation in Jesus. I'm not condemning you. I'm saying you're missing the mark as a man. As a man, if you take serious the priest of your home, the prophet of your home, the priest, prophet, king, and warrior of this house, then here's what you need to understand. Young men are falling away in transition because men of old don't understand how to mentor. They don't know how to reach back and teach a young man what it means to be a man. But we really like setting back and talking about how they don't know. Tell them to pull their pants up. Tell them you should be opening that door. You should be speaking this way. Don't use that language. Don't watch that stuff. But yet you've done nothing to invest in your child. So why am I saying that? Because our next gen department has a very low involvement of men. And you just need to know, I'm not okay with that. So if you're a man here and that offends you, I don't apologize. I hope it offends you to the point of action. I hope it offends you to the point that you go, you know what? That's not going to be able to be said about me. I'm going to invest in the children that I have, and I'm going to invest in the children of this house because I'm a part of this house, and I want to see the legacy of this house and men and young men and women of God go on. I'm not going to be silent where a voice is needed. So the expectation is this, so you understand. If you're in here and you're a guy and you don't, you're not involved in the next-gen department on some level. It doesn't mean you've got to teach. It doesn't mean you've got to be Emily Harris. There's only one of those. There'll never be another one. Like, God did that and quit. Okay, so like, <laughs> she's, a, she's amazing though. She's not, like, she's captivating. She holds your attention. She knows how to get the point across. She is great for what she does. Why do I say that? Because you are great for what God designed you to do. And if you're a man of God in here, you have been designed, created to mentor the next generation. And it's not okay that you're not involved in that. It's not okay. You know what guys do best? Play. How many guys in here have a problem playing? Like you just like goofing off. You like playing. You like playing sports. You like, like you love game time, whatever that looks like to you. Every next-gen department has a game time. Like you need to be in there shooting hoops or whatever it is they do in that big quest. I went in there one time and I thought I was going to get killed. I mean, it's wild in there. And I loved it. It was awesome. Every guy needs to be involved in that. Some guys in here, you can lead a small group. You can teach young men and young girls. You can do all that appropriately. Because you know what children need today? A man to demonstrate appropriate love and compassion to children who don't get it. There are a lot of young men here who don't have that. They either passed away or they're completely absent. And they need you in their life in an appropriate way. Now, I'm not saying that the women don't got to get involved in that because the truth is you already are. So I celebrate every woman of God in this place who's involved in Next Gen, and thank you so much. But you know what you do really well that we don't do so well is you nurture kids. They're so compassionate and so loving, which is the very thing that they need. But I'm telling you, it does not happen the way God intended until both men and women of God understand the power of parenting together. The greatest thing the church can give a family is another adult in their kid's life, which is the last point. 
a parent is not the only relationship your child needs. Now, if you got little kids, I know you believe that. I know you want to hang on to that. You're like, no, no, no. I'm going to be there for my kids. I'm going to be available. I'm going to be the best teacher. But I'm telling you, when they get a teenager, you're going to realize really quick, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know where to tell you to go. You're driving me nuts. I just want to tell you to go. Like, it just it becomes this, this dilemma that we're in. So how do, you, how do you just go ahead and prepare for that? You get involved in a community with a strategy that's going to come alongside of you, parent your children with you, same belief system, same values, and what's going to happen is you're going to leave an unbelievable legacy. That's what it looks like in the context of family. That's why Orange Sunday is so important to us as a church. It's why the next gen pastors are so important to us and to you. It's why that environment is so important to us. So every person in here should take this challenge and figure out how can I be involved in the next generation. There they are until you go through. I promise you they'll plug you in and kick past in a hurry. And let me just tell you this, you'll never regret it. And can I say this? You don't have to be perfect at it. I want to close with a scripture and a quote. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. Nehemiah has, um, is a Jew. He's going to go back to Jerusalem. He was a cupbearer for a foreign king. And the wall had been torn down, and he knew the wall needed to be rebuilt to protect the city. And as they were rebuilding the wall, they were going to be attacked. And so he began to kind of put everybody together on how to continually rebuild the wall, even though they were going to be attacked. And he says this, Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at all exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome. And fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. He stationed people next to one another, next to the families. He stationed the people next to the families and said, don't be afraid because God's awesome. Now go fight for your wives, your sons, your daughters, and your families. But he said that not just to dads and moms. He said that to every single leader inside his, his conversational space. So I say that today, and I echo what Nehemiah says. I need all of us to post up beside families, to fight for the sons and the daughters, to fight for the next generation, so that none of them will be lost in transition. My dream, as the Potter's dream, is to have the largest high school ministry in this city. Not because numbers are awesome, but because that means they're not being lost in transition. That means this is attractive and they want to be here. I want to have kids that blow that space out. I want to have to expand that side of this building before this one. I mean that with all my heart. Because the truth is, we're all getting older. And the greatest gift we've been given is children to leave a legacy. God is at work telling a story of restoration and redemption through your family. Never buy into the myth that you need to become the right kind of parent before God can use you in your children's lives. Instead, learn to cooperate with whatever God desires to do in your heart today so that your children have a front row seat to the grace and goodness of God. You have a choice, parents. Your legacy can be postponed or your legacy can become a reality. We have to choose to be willing to do whatever it takes to ensure there are no kids lost in transition and we leave a very powerful legacy of faith. What does that mean for you today? What does that mean for you today? Does it mean I'm going to be a part of playtime? I'm going to teach a life group to kids? I'm going to rock babies? I'm going to be in the four-year-old room because I have patience like, like you cannot imagine? I'm going to go in quest. I would like to be a part of the dance team, and I need kids to teach me rhythm because I have none. I'm totally going to be involved in the quest because I can't work my cell phone, and I need some help, and they can help me. I don't know, what does it look like for you? Because here, why did I say that? Because you're going to go over there and think, I'm going to teach these kids something. And you're the one that's going to be taught. Y'all welcome Justin to the stage and Amy.